This is LXBN TV and I'm Colin O'Keefe. Last week in Mayo Collaborative Services v. Prometheus Laboratories, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of Mayo, saying that the, pa the patent Prometheus had obtained for, for cor correlations between blood test results and patient health is not eligible for a patent because it incorporates laws of nature. To discuss the case, we bring in Antoinette Konsky, partner with Foley and Lardner, and author on the Personalized Medicine Bulletin. Uh, Antoinette, you know, starting off with more of the basic elements, obviously this case hinges on whether Prometheus is trying to, to, to whether the patent is simply a law of nature or it's a patentable application of that law of nature. Can you explain the, the background here and then the court's ruling on this? Sure. So Pr Prometheus had technology where they measured thiopurine levels in a patient's blood and if there was too much thiopurine, uh, the patient will be subject to extreme toxicity, and if there was too little, then they weren't getting the therapeutic effect. And because patients metabolize the drug differently, it's really important for the treating physician to keep um, uh, to monitor the situation. So Prometheus developed laboratory tests and sold them to Mayo, and Mayo was using the tests until about 2004 when they decided that they were going to start using their own test. Mm -hmm. Prometheus sued Mayo for patent infringement. At the district court level, uh, the court found that the claims of the Prometheus patent were infringed, but they were nevertheless held invalid because they didn't satisfy 101, which is the whole question here, the question of patent eligibility. Mm -hmm. To the Federal Circuit, the Federal Circuit reversed and said that indeed that the claims were patent eligible. And then Mayo appealed to the federal, excuse me, appealed to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court uh, issued a GVR, which means that they grant the petition, they vacate it, and they remand it to the Federal Circuit. So it was remanded to the Federal Circuit to reconsider, for the Federal Circuit to reconsider its position in light of their Bilski decision. Now, Bilski was another patent eligibility situation, but it dealt with high tech uh, computer methods. Um, so it came back down to the Federal Circuit, and once again, they determined that they were patent eligible, even under the Bilsky, even under the Bilsky standard or under the Bilsky um, decision. Mm -hmm. Once again, Mayo appealed to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court took it, and that is what uh, led to this decision. Second, Prometheus's patent has been opposed by many, including the, the American Medical Association, because it could potentially slow down disease research. What are your thoughts on this? And then in basic terms, is this true? My particular opinion or my personal opinion on this is that it will not slow down research. And the reason is this. A patent holder holds the right and it's, an, it's a, a right to prohibit others from doing something. So that patent holder has to assert it against someone. Research is typically done in universities and other not-for-profit institutions. And if there's no profit being made at the research level, what is the benefit to pursue a patent against that person? In addition, companies don't want to pursue and, and sue doctors. Doctors are their patients. Why would you want to sue a doctor? What happened in this situation is Mayo decided to go out and commercialize it, another test, a test that, for the most part, was a copy mm -hmm. of what Prometheus had on the market. So then there was, you know, Mayo was, was turning a profit on technology that Prometheus had patented. So I, I haven't seen companies go after hospitals where they're not commercializing a test, go after research institutions. I just haven't seen it. I see. And then lastly, you know, what impact does this case have on the previous Myriad gene patenting case? I know these two cases have been linked somewhat, and there have been recent developments in the Supreme Court with that case. So what's going on with the, with the Myriad case and then with gene patenting in, in general? So I, as you know, the, the Myriad case deals with whether or not DNA, which is initially extracted from the human body and separated from the human body and therefore has commercial applications, should be patentable. And the Supreme Court this week issued, similar to that as they did in the, the Prometheus case, a GVR, and asked the Federal Circuit to reconsider their prior decision which held that genes, isolated DNA, was patentable subject matter in light of this 
in light of this decision. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen there? I really wish I had a crystal ball fall here. I think it's going to be a very interesting decision. There's been a lot in the press with respect to whether or not uh, the Federal Circuit there's a, there's a possibility that the Federal Circuit may decide to not even take the case because there's an issue whether the plaintiffs still have standing. The one plaintiff that was kind of the main plaintiff for this situation, um, he's moved on to another hospital. So it's unclear whether there's even a, a, a standing to pursue it. So there's, there's buzz that perhaps the, the Federal Circuit will dismiss it on that grounds. And then what that would happen is that uh, plaintiffs would have to find someone else to take up the challenge and, and challenge, challenge the patents, but before they could challenge the patents, they'd have to be asserted against them. I see. Well, it's going to be very interesting to watch. These are two you know, very important cases. Prometheus was very interesting, and then we'll have to see what happens with Myriad going forward. Uh, once again, that was Antoinette Konsky of Foley and Lardner in the Personalized Medicine Bulletin. For more on this story, if you're at all interested in it, be sure to check out that publication. It's at personalizedmedicinebulletin.com. Uh, and then also, Antoinette, you guys at Foley and Lardner have another pu publication, Pharma Patents, which has been all over these two cases. So be sure to check out those publications. And of course, we have more on this story at lxpn.lexblog.com. Thanks, Antoinette. Thank you.